This week, we're talking about hope, but not just any hope. We're talking about Hope Summers. So body slide by 10 because you're listening to a kind of garbage first in cameo podcast. Welcome everyone to First in Cameo. Today we're talking about Hope Summers, the adopted daughter of Cable, Nathan Summers. I'm Adam Bishop and with me as always is... I'm Dan Collins. Dan, um, how was research for this character? I think I'm throwing not... She's not even obscure, I guess just not enough content or books about her out. She's not obscure, but like... No, no, not by any means. Literally though, when like she doesn't... She hasn't been in a whole lot of books though. She's been over, over a thousand comics no way yeah she personally has been in a thousand comics i believe i don't have that exact web page up when i was researching but i think she's over over one thousand issues adam she was first introduced in 2008 which is 13 years ago so you're saying in 13 years she's been in a thousand issues maybe not i don't know i'm just i, I don't that have seems like up. a lot that seems like a lot. <laughs> Let me true. get my calculator. I'm getting my calculator out on my phone here. Okay. And let's see. So 13 years times 12 months is 156 months. Okay. So over the course of 156 months, she's been in 1,000 issues. That that equals six issues a month. My math might be wrong. <laughs> no, six. That means she's been in six issues a month, Adam. That's That sounds about right. <laughs> it does not sound <laughs> she's not deadpool yeah i okay I'm, i probably pulled well i saw that number somewhere maybe it was for someone maybe else. maybe you missed a zero and it was a hundred maybe i have no idea now anyways um there is no hope for me and my research on hope summers i lost uh, all hope <laughs> it's sugar man all over again sugar man all over again maybe even slightly worse it's like i i have five books how many do you have i got three books okay that's not bad and as you said though when we were chatting before the show you're like but how many of them are slapped because Ooh. that's the whole point of this thing isn't it it is well not not i guess the whole point but you know it's a little bit of the point it is. And it's, I guess it's harder when it's characters that, yeah, haven't been in too many major books and are relatively like babies compared to the comic books who have 80 years or characters who have 80 years behind them. Yeah. Babies just like baby sugar man. <laughs> one, one appearance, no more, no less. <laughs> yeah. So for Hope Summers, how about I go first since there's my research is so poor. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to say before I go first? Um, I, I'm going to assume that I know which book is yours, which is going to be, well, I'm not going to say it, but yeah, no, I have nothing. You go. <laughs> All right. So first up, uh, I have X-Men 205. Was that your pick? That That is my book number three. Your book number three? In chronological order, yes. In, cro in chronological order. Okay, so should you go first? And no, then when I, we I, get to your book number three, I'll jump in? No, you because you do this one, and then I'll go to my book number one. <laughs> how How is... Okay, so let's just go X-Men 205, Marvel Comics, January 2008. Mike Carey story, Chris Bacalo and Tim Townsend art, David Finch cover. This is the first appearance of Hope Summers. So how do you have something earlier than this? I, I just do. <laughs> you just do. I have two books earlier than this. You have, you have two books that are earlier than the first appearance of Hope Summers. And you're going to yell at me that they don't count. <laughs> they don't count is one... Um, it's no, 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 no guessing. No guessing. Let's continue. I was going to say, is there an episode where you see Cable have sex and you're like, that's the first appearance. Oh my God. But, <laughs> but she's the adopted daughter, not the actual daughter. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you say Bishop right. or Cable? I said Cable. Okay. For some reason, her Bishop. <laughs> that's because I was thinking about Bishop and how much of a bastard he is. I, I love the Bishop character until I read this this storyline but anyways go ahead X -Men yeah well i guess we can get to that later it's true yeah, so yeah. x-men 205 the notes are just first appearance of hope summers i don't know what the plot of this story is just that um this is the first appearance of the unnamed baby who would later be named hope summers is that about correct yeah it's a first 
first appearance. I, I'm surprised it doesn't say baby Hope Summers because I know baby Cable. I think the CGC notes even say baby Cable or like baby Nathan Summers. But do they, do they say baby or do they say as a child? I don't know because Cable, before they sent him to the future, Nathan Summers, like that, that is Cable. And it's, and it's not like, um, it's not an issue that came out after Cable was first shown. This, like, baby Nathan Summers predates Cable. Wait, or is that wrong? I have no idea. It's X-Men, who knows? <laughs> it's pulling shit in my ass now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, the, that's where it comes from. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't, do, you have, do you have anything to add about this one before we census it up um have you have you read this issue yeah of course i've read this issue issue of course (laughs) i have i know you're a big x-men guy right yeah my girlfriend bought me all i want to say like four five or six trade paperbacks of this storyline which if you like cable and i do that's like five cable trade paperbacks um and this is like a standout storyline for me this one of my favorites what was the storyline uh, it was Messiah Complex. Okay, that's what I thought, but I forgot to note that. <laughs> yeah, so the Messiah Complex. So this is her first appearance. On the census, there's 143 9.8s. 11 of, of those are signature series. 85 9.6s with seven of those being signature series. And 94, or sorry, 34, 9, 33 9.4s with six of those being signature series. Damn, popular book. Very popular for the signature series, yeah. When I was browsing on the, the eBay, I think a 9.8 was currently being, um, not going for it, but people were asking for $600 for that, which sure, I guess, if you want to pay that much for the first appearance of a baby. <laughs> But when I looked at the sold listings, it had gone for two ninety for a nine point eight. So, so that's a more realistic price. Yeah, like three hundred Canadian plus like thirty dollars shipping would would net you that book at a nine point eight. And there's plenty out there, so just just wait for a good price. Well, it's only a hundred and forty three. Uh, yeah, I guess that's not that many. <laughs> I mean, that's still that's still a pretty pretty much a lot. Um, yeah. So what's uh what's the Messiah Complex story? How does uh the unnamed baby Hope Summers appear. What role does she play? That will bring me to my book number one. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so my book number one is New X Men number thirty six, published by Marvel Comics, May first, two thousand seven. I don't believe this had a graded copy from from when I went to the website. So I don't have any census for this, unfortunately. On the, I'm going to start the eBay listings first. On eBay, it's ten bucks plus seven dollars shipping. I love that you're dancing around why why this is an important book, so that you can get all your information out before I tell you it doesn't count. Yep, and there, <laughs> I, I couldn't I couldn't find any CGC, CBS, PGX. They're not available online. Obviously, CGC. So um, the note is: this is the first mention prophesizing the mutant messiah that would become slash named hope summers okay i you know what i can that counts i will count that yeah that is a great book that is yeah. a great book okay. and yeah nobody slabbed it's it's the first mention of the the mutant messiah which is the messiah complex this has to do with after house of m scarlet which said no more mutants so there was never another mutant born and then it was prophesized i can't remember how or why that a mutant messiah would be born and that was hope summers so she was the first new mutant after house of m yeah now do you have do you have have you read this issue sorry i just got completely distracted have you read the new x-men issue i don't think so no um unless it was in one of my trades where they really don't tell you what issue which issue is it yeah yeah which is bizarre you think that they would at least break it with a cover in between but i don't think they did and i could be completely wrong as well yeah i hate it when they do that but yeah was that the grant morrison run new x-men uh ooh, um it might it what volume was that i don't know oh he he i have i have a couple grant morrison written new x-men trade paperbacks but it's new x-men like 118 and 130 and stuff so these are way further okay yeah but i don't i don't know when these ones were released i feel like it's my this might be one of those um uh this was printed in 2005 so they must have just redone the numbering yeah that's 2007 number 36 yeah gotta love that that I have older books with higher numbers of the same series. Oh, even on the CGC census, when you look at the numbering of books and you're like, I'm looking for this one and you click on the series, it'll go up to the 200s and then it starts at one again 
And then you see where legacy numbering kicks in and you're like, holy shit, like it's insane. Yeah. Thanks, Marvel. Thanks for making my pain in the butt, Marvel. (laughs) So I would I would count this now. It is kind of like, you know, they always have as soon as House of M happened, they're like, we got to put in a prophecy about the next mutant. Like it, it wasn't actually hope summer is like yeah she wasn't named yet it was just that there there's a mute messiah coming so the character was mentioned beforehand but like it did it did it say a little baby girl who was would come to rescue mutants or was it literally just there's a messiah coming yeah no detail at all (laughs) as far as i know yeah it was just the plot of like hey this is gonna happen this is the prophecy and people are like oh shit like let's we have to watch out for this kid and i think it was in the comics i think it was cerebro or professor x that first like felt the presence of the new mutant because that's the whole purpose of the machine but it's been a while since i've read that series so i'm i'm pretty rusty yeah it's we'll we'll count that we'll 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 say that one counts what's your next one so my number two is X-Men Messiah Complex. It was a one shot. It's from December 2007, published by Marvel Comics. And this one I do have a census for as well. So this has um, Ed Brubaker's story and Mark Silvestri cover and art. So this doesn't have any key notes to it, according to the CGC. But the note that I have for it is that this is the birth of the mute messiah off panel that would become hope yeah okay so hope was born in this issue you don't see her but this is this is the moment that she came into existence so she has she is birthed she has popped out of her mom and she is ready to save mutant kind now do you know who her mom is yeah they um i don't know what her name is she's a nobody she she's dead like w- later on i think it was in generation hope hope goes to, like find her family who's um from alaska and her mom had already passed away i can't re- remember why but her grandmother was still there and she like tries to learn about i guess her heritage but that's all i have for that plot and so this is definitely hope summers the unnamed baby who would become hope summers that was born yeah off panel it, it's off about. panel yeah that she was born let's go find this baby <laughs> okay so this is basically setting up the the story exactly yeah The census for this is that there are 26 total CGC books. There are 14 9.8s. Three of them are signature series, 11 are universal. Then there are uh, six 9.6s, three universal, three signature series, and 9.4, three universal, three signature series. (laughs) And and that's all the that's all the grades. And that's all. And there's no notes. So what's the point of having it anyways? Uh, there's well, there's people who have their entire X-Men run graded. So who knows? But yeah, this one you can grab off eBay. Um, there was no CGC on eBay of the regular cover because there are multiple covers of this. Um, standard cover, there are none available. There are a bunch of like variant covers, but normal cover went for $5.47 with $33 shipping for some reason. Okay. And that brings us back to X-Men 205, which is the first appearance of Hope Summer in a panel yep sweet okay so my next issue we'll see if it's the same issue my next issue i had was cable volume two number 10 i have that may 1st 2007 is that your next one or do you have something in between that's my number four now this one i couldn't find any slabbed comics of this yeah i don't um i don't have any census or notes for any slabs i couldn't find any either yeah and so this one the issue is called waiting for the end of the world chapter four the last hope wink wink nudge nudge (laughs) and you know i went looking for a synopsis of this issue even trying to get like what was happening in the whole issue couldn't find anything all i found is just an entry with a bunch of info like featured characters like nathaniel summers Cable and Hope Summers, real name first revealed. No plot notes, but this is when she is named Hope Summers, right? Yeah, I think she was like seven or eight. Like she was a little kid and she's like, Can I have a name? He's like, Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? Can I have a name now? I've survived for seven years, please. My favorite thing about the character. So you you said you haven't read this, um, the Cable series for this? No, I haven't. Okay, so at, at one point, Cable and her, they can only jump to the future because um, Cable's time machine or his like, time wristband, wherever yep. it is, is damaged and Bishop is chasing them throughout time. Cable and Hope are jumping to the future. And at one point, somehow Cable, like, 
I think he has to like hold her because he has a time machine and he drops her and she falls at a yeah. time. So I think it was for a decade. I think, yeah, I think it was for a decade where he's like for him, it was one second and he's like where hope should be. And then, but for her, she had to survive for 10 years by herself where she actually gets like adopted into this family, not adopted, adopted, but she gets taken in by them. And so Cable finds her. He's like, hope, oh my God, I thought I lost you. She's like, you did lose me for 10 years. He's like, oh, it was like a minute for me. <laughs> but He's like, oh, you haven't changed. Yeah, that was Marvel's <laughs> way of getting Hope older of without getting aging, Cable yeah. O- older, yeah. How, great job, Marvel. Great job. As soon as you were saying this, I was like, oh, they were just aging her up so they could, you know, have her be a teenager now instead of a baby. Yeah, which I I think by the time she actually reaches back to the normal time when her and Cable go back in time, because I think they steal Bishop's time machine or his time travel device. And I think she's 17 at that point. They even mention it. And I'm like, guys, can you made her 18 because you have her in this like super tight green like costume and i'm like uh this i mean at least make her 18 so you're not like look at this 17 year old or skin yeah. tight costume it's always weird why pick 17 yeah when 18 is right there yeah it's like oh she's 18 now it's like oh thank god but no it's like <laughs> look at this look at this what do they call it um like a cat suit basically on her and you're like, mm, yeah. no Look at this minor in a cat suit. No, thank you. No. So Bishop, Bishop is a real prick yeah. in this series, right? Yeah. The story is originally Bishop came back in time to stop Gambit from assassinating Senator Kelly. Now, I can't remember if that's the cartoon show or the comics. I'm pretty sure it's both. And... <laughs> or is it the comic of the cartoon show? Oh, it's true. Because I have all those. <laughs> They're great. So um, Bishop stops, not Gambit, it's Mystique, from killing Senator Kelly. And that's why he originally came back to change his future. But then in this series, you find out, no, he actually came back to stop the mutant messiah who killed everybody on earth, like a a huge portion of humanity. And that's why the Sentinels are rounding up the mutants, like, and they have to control them because of Hope Summers, who basically did a T2 explosion and killed a bunch of Mm. people. Terminator 2 for people who didn't catch that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. So I was reading um, I was reading some plot synopsises of like, well, while I read through the like Wikipedia entry for Hope all the way through to read all the different things as I was trying to figure out what was uh, important information and not. And yeah, like Bishop's basically chasing them through time, trying to kill her and stop this apocalypse event. Right. Yeah. It's interesting because even in the before, I think when Hope is born and Cable gets her, Wolverine is looking for her to kill her as well because he knows he has to stop her from existing because it's it's supposed to be bad for everybody, basically. And we'll get that later on, which I don't think I picked the book, which I should have for that topic. But anyways, Wolverine encounters Cable with her. And it's like, you got the package? And Cable's like, yeah. And Wolverine says, him, okay, good, take care of her. And then Wolverine just like walks away. And I think he like drinks beer with Cable in the in the like the arctic or sorry alaska but that could be a different story as well but yeah wolverine's just like take the girl protect her she's our last hope and hope 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 because she's the hope now the was what you were alluding to earlier the avengers versus x-men yeah where she and that's the whole like big climactic part of her story which isn't even that great i did pick a, a book from that series for my final entry cool shall i launch into that now let's do it all right so i picked avengers versus x-men uh number 12 marvel comics december 2012 aaron bendis brubacher a fraction and hickman story adam kubert arts and so this one basically this whole avengers versus x-men series this uh event is about hope summers with the i can't i don't know which side is on which like who's one side's trying to kill her and one side's trying to keep her safe yeah the x-men are trying to keep her safe and the avengers are trying to either kill her or detain her and because they're afraid that she'll become the dark phoenix yeah because the phoenix force is coming to earth and they they don't want her to get it because that's what happened in the future with Bishop saying hope gets the Phoenix force. And then she basically blows up. She's kind of like Peter Petrelli from heroes where it's like, save the cheerleader, save the world, save the one, world. This one is kill the cheerleader, save the world. <laughs> but the jokes on the Avengers, because instead a bunch of X-Men become possessed by the dark Phoenix. Yeah. You get the Phoenix right? five, you get Colossus, Cyclops, Emma Frost. Oh fuck. Who else is it? And there's two more people. I don't remember magic. I think I, I have the uh, Avengers versus X-Men trade paperback, and I don't think I've ever read it, possibly. Uh, I have it too. It's okay. Um, But yeah, I don't think I've ever read it. Yeah, so in this 
issue, this is the issue where Hope becomes the phoenix and she uses the power to start undoing the bad that has been done by the dark phoenix and like some other stuff or whatever, you know, the magic lets wipe the slate clean thing. And then at the end of the issue, she lets go of the phoenix force instead of becoming the savior or tyrant that she may have become with it. And then mutants start to appear to to start to appear again. That's when Generation Hope's comic book series starts, her first ongoing series, uh, which I did not pick. (laughs) (laughs) And she goes and is tracking down these mutants, which is a very diverse cast of people. And a lot of them, I don't like their design. I have that entire run of that series as well, because I really like Hope as a character. And the funny thing is, none of this is, none of the plot that I mentioned is on the CGC label at all. There's no notes for the label. Like, it doesn't say, like, Hope becomes the dark, becomes the phoenix, or, you know, whatever. It's just like, no blank. They're, they're like, we're just going to re we're just going to redo this all in five years anyway. So there's no point putting a note on it. Yeah. I love how they can have like first Norman Osborn as green. What was it? Green as red as red goblin. There you go. Right. I don't even fucking know. Yeah. Red goblin, but you can't have hope summers as the Phoenix, but then you can have someone like Carol Danvers as captain Marvel when she was miss Marvel beforehand. And, yeah, so that seems maybe they're just pandering to the MCU at this point. They're like, fuck the X-Men. Marvel doesn't have that, but they do now. And as soon as the MCU takes the X-Men on board and we start seeing these appearances, then they'll then these will all get renoted because people will suddenly want them. Yeah. But n- nobody wants them based on the old X-Men movies. No, and guaranteed that the f- very first X-Men storyline they're going to do in the MCU is the Phoenix because you have Guardians of the Galaxy, you had Captain Marvel, and then you had the Infinity Stones, which are all like cosmic things, which is what the Phoenix is. So I assume that's what's going to happen. You know, I think it would probably be better for them to do something smaller, like just a more Earthbound style story to introduce the characters rather than some sort of cosmic thing. I well, I think that either Bishop or Cable are going to come back in time and then they're going to set something off. Like they're going to have to retcon like a lot of history for the MCU to get those characters in. And I think time travel is going to have to do with it since they've already done that with Ant-Man now with the pin particles. Yeah. Like so you don't think they could just uh, have that like mutants suddenly become a thing in the MCU and start from now with, you know, and there wouldn't be a history of mutants, but we could see that the X-Men being born as mutants. What I think is going to happen for that, um, if they do it this way is, that mutants were there all along. They just didn't know because mutants were actually that well hidden, kind of like what DC tried to do with Wonder Woman. And I guess it would be the second Wonder Woman. Have you seen that one? I have not. Okay, me neither. Uh, (laughs) But (laughs) But let's talk about it like we have. Yeah, apparently in Wonder Woman 84, she's kind of like the red and blue streak from Smallville where people never really see her and she disables any cameras that are around so people don't know about her even though she's still alive in that time period. So she's kind of hidden while being in plain sight as well. Yeah, and I think that's kind of stupid, Mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. Like it's, you can't, (laughs) Like, what's the point? Like, either either have the character be literally incognito, like dressed as somebody else and doing their thing or doing their thing somewhere where they're not like like literal like guerrilla tactics or something where they're not being seen by anybody or just have it known. Like, don't why they didn't have to go back to 1984 to do this move. They could have done anything. But yeah, so you think that the now do you think that they they could also just have something happen that sets off the mutations that are inside of everybody. But I I don't want kid mutants. I don't want... No, no, that they wouldn't, like, maybe adults have mutant powers dormant inside them. And then, you know, maybe the Pym Particle 2 explodes their mutantness into something and suddenly their powers come out of them that they didn't realize they had before. I know with mutants that their powers manifest at puberty, but I don't know if it's like something that just passes by. So if it doesn't come out, if you can get your powers activated as an adult, that I don't know. Other than the first X-Men movie where where they did that, (laughs) where Magneto powered, was it the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, they're fighting on the Statue of Liberty. Oh, what Um, a great movie. (laughs) I was watching a What Culture video about about heroes when they realize they're the villain this morning and on it was professor x from all of the uh like times because i guess you probably know this i'm not i haven't read any current x-men issues like from the past decade or so it's revealed that professor x has been like 
he wiped Cyclops' mind of, of his memories of his brother and stuff. And he's done all this other like shady stuff over the years with his powers. And then some other character makes him relive all these moments as his victims and see what he's done to them. And he realizes that he is a piece of crap person. Oh yeah, Professor X is fucked up. <laughs> so what I'm saying here is, what would, could you imagine suddenly like after the next Marvel movie at, at the end credit scene is just Professor X like sitting there watching and he's there and everybody, we would know who he is if he looks anything like his character in the comics, right? Because he's an iconic character. And the idea that like, he let Thanos snap people out of existence and didn't use his powers because he didn't want to reveal himself or something. That seems very Professor X-ish. Yeah. So that's all the books that I've got. So yeah, you're up. All right. So my last book is Cable and X-Force, number 10. This is from August 2013, published by Marvel Comics. There are slabs of this issue. The art comments are Dennis Hopeless Story and Salvador La Roca cover and art. So this one doesn't have any notes for it other than the comments for the artwork, but this is the first appearance of Lady Strife, which is Hope Summers as Strife. And you know who Strife is. Uh, refresh my memory. Strife was the evil clone of Cable who wore the all silver costume. He had the sword, the red cape, and he almost had like um, okay, his right. helmet looked like Wolverine like style, like horns coming off of it. Sure. And uh, was he like in the, was he first introduced in like the, the new last New Mutants annual like that era? Um, I he... think I read a story with him. Yeah, his big, I think Executioner's Song is where he really. that That's. That was one that was thinking, yeah. Yeah, he was um, the, one of the main protagonists other than, sorry, main antagonist. Yes, thank you. Of that story, other than the Executioner who blew and nobody cared about him. Executioner's song is a great story with a, a horrible, horrible main villain. Executioner is garbage, throw him away, no one cares about him. <laughs> so this one does have some slabs, like I said. There are three in total. One 9.8 Universal and one signature series 9.8 and then a 9.6 signature series as well so there's more signature series than than universals for this issue that's uh that's interesting yeah now why is lady strife important lady strife is important because i believe this is the first time anyone else has taken on the persona of strife and this is from an alternate reality i don't believe i have the note of which earth this is no i don't have it lady strife um Basically, she took over the mantle of Strife after Cable retired because he saw that what he was fighting for, he couldn't actually achieve it. And I guess for some reason, she's like, OK, I'm going to be a bad guy. <laughs> um, I do. I do have this issue that this is in. I just I haven't read it. It's in uh, one of my trades. I'm shaking my head at you because you claim to be the biggest cable fan and you haven't even read this oh well i have i think for the the cable the original ongoing series i have like the first 57 issues and a bunch of them i have not read a lot of the later cable i have but yeah like i would i hope they make a figure of this it's basically just strife like with a female body and i was gonna say lips but like lipstick like lady <laughs> lips i guess lady lips on the, the silver hilarious yeah i i also i do have the the hope summers action figure which was a marvel legends figure i picked that up at the quinty toy show back when um when we went there that was the one where we ran into each other yeah <laughs> i think marty was there as well right i don't know if i saw marty there or not that was i think that's the one where my kid decided they wanted to buy a 20 dollar popple do you remember popples what, what are popples it's a stuffed animal where it's a little it's a little animal thing, a, ca a character, a popple, which is a little alien looking thing. And then, but you can, it's a stuffed animal and you can flip it inside out and it becomes a ball. Oh yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. There's new plushy toys like that, which are octopuses, octopi. And you get like a little octopus and you flip it inside out and it's still an octopus, but it has like an angry face instead. <laughs> and th that's the magic. That was me when they asked for $20 to buy a popple, but oh, well. Like, I guess. I guess. She still has it and she still plays with it. Oh, that's good. See? So it wasn't a waste. Yeah. So what is it about uh, Hope Summers that you like so much? Because you said you like the character. Yeah, Um. I guess it was first reading the Cable comics. And if you read House of M, like, and, and you're interested in mutants, this is the character in the story to basically start reading after reading House of M. And I don't know, I just, I always read it. Like, I, I read it when I got it. 
And then I just enjoyed the character. She has orange hair. So I was like, yeah, orange hair power. <laughs> or I guess she has red hair. It's the same thing. Like House of, I didn't read House of M uh, at the time that it was published. I think I read it like a few years later. But at the time, like when we talk about events that, you know, everybody has event fatigue, they're constantly pushing events and non- nothing has any meaning. But House of M actually had some meaning for at least a, a little bit. Yeah, there's the spinoff series um, Decimation M that came out, which followed, I want to say, five different mutants that lost their powers. Because not only were there no new mutants being born, but Emma Frost deactivated, I think it was like 98% of mutants. You mean so, Wanda? what I say? Emma. Ugh. But Wanda (laughs) deactivated 98% of mutants. And one of them was her own brother, Quicksilver, who went from the fastest man alive to just like literally just another guy. And I think he suffered from depression. The blob lost his powers and he lost the, I think it's the less elasticity of his um, body. And that's that's what it was. So he just looked like his, he just had a bunch of loose skin. He was like, oh no. And I think Jubilee was another person who lost her powers. And I believe um, Danny Moonstar lost her powers as well. And those were the four or five. I can't remember who else it was. That they were following. But yeah, but like hundreds of mutants lost their powers, right? Yeah. And there was a big concern that Wolverine might have lost his. Because if he did, he would have died instantly from adamantium poisoning inside of his body. Was he just like off camera here like nobody knew what he was doing no um house of m of course wolverine was the star of that book of course everyone had like their their new reality where uncle ben was still alive peter parker lived with him and they all had their memories um changed by her but there's like this one little girl and i can't remember why she knew that something wasn't right and i believe she was a mutant she's like touches wolverine's head or something and gives him all of his memories back and that was like their mary sue to make Wolverine like the hero of this. And it's him like going to find everybody. And then they gave Peter Parker his memory back as well somehow. And then he's losing it because he has all of his memories of Uncle Ben dying, plus hanging out with this new Uncle Ben who is alive. And he had like a nervous breakdown. House of, I think you might've even lent me House of M a few years ago to read. I might've, yeah. And by a few years, I mean, an old person saying a few years, it was probably a decade ago. I was gonna say, yeah, it's probably a decade. (laughs) Like probably literally a decade ago. And it was good. I should, I was just thinking I should hop on to the old eBay, Amazon chapters and see if I can pick up a trade of that one. Oh, I think that's one of the evergreen titles because Marvel's always publishing certain trade paperbacks throughout the years, making sure they're like in print. And that's definitely one of them. Yeah. Have you read Second Coming? I have it. I believe so. Like, isn't that a hope centric thing? Because she's on the cover of the trade paperback. Yeah, I, I I don't remember. Like I have, I've definitely read biggest, it. Biggest Hope fan hasn't read the other stories with her on the cover. No, Wait, I, I've definitely read the, it. I just don't remember. Is this the one where I traded you my paperback for your hardcover? That was the prelude. Second coming uh, revelations. Yeah, where we because I don't have the prelude, but I have I do have revelations. But yeah, I'm just looking at it um, right now. What, what does to, the back uh, say? <laughs> The mutant population is down to a mere 181 who carry the X gene, hardly enough to sustain the race. For more than a year, no mut- new mutants were born until Hope came along, a mutant baby girl. Yeah, just she was sent to the future with Cable. They've returned. She's the mutant messiah, the one who will lead the race into peaceful and prosperous future. However, the Human League is bent on eradicating the last 181 mutants left on Earth. And Bastion, a highly evolved m- a sentinel, mutant hunting right? sentinel, yeah, yeah, is on is trying to kill her. So this is a event, non-event, right? Yeah, it's like a, a mini, mini mutant event. event. <laughs> we'll call them mutant events. Mutant events, yeah. So I have read this one, but I read it many years ago. Yeah, because even during that, I believe that the group that's hunting them even says like, it's over. We don't need to kill her anymore. And Bastion's like, nope, need to kill her. Nah, I'm kind of committed to this. I'm just (laughs) going to see this through. Thanks. I mean, I have a few different um, Hope comics that I could have read to help prepare for this, but I chose not to. So (laughs) as per usual, I did not read anything leading up. (laughs) Just like you and the Captain Connect one, where I offered you all of this 
material and you're like i'm good thanks yeah captain canuck i i hear he's a cool hero (laughs) and the audience can hear he's a cool hero too if they check out our last episode go listen to the captain canuck episode now uh, he has more listens than the sugar man episode finally sweet is it just by like one or two yep (laughs) oh no all right that's really all i have for hope that's all that I, that's all the hope that I had. I'm hopeless. Go read these books that we mentioned. Read them. Um... Can we just talk about how it's funny that a guy named Dennis Hopeless wrote a comic book about hope? I know. I saw that and I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> like that's, that's a good guy to write this, this story about. Um, I think that was for the Strife book, right? The, yeah, that was yeah, for Lady yes. Strife. Yeah, he's like, it's going to be hope because I'm Mr. Hopeless. <laughs> Putting all of my hope in this because I'm hopeless. Dennis Hopeless. So, Dan, who is going to be our next character? Will it be a lady or will it be a man? Well, I I was thinking our next character, maybe it won't be Gene Simmons. It won't be Richard Simmons, but it will be Al Simmons, a.k.a. Spawn. Ah, Spawn. What a pull. I cannot wait to talk about medieval Spawn, the only Spawn action figure I ever owned. I know literally nothing about Spawn. Have you not seen the movie? No, haven't even seen the movie. This okay. is going to be great. Get get ready for Spawn because, yeah, I other than the movie, I've bought a few issues. I know nothing about Spawn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's it for this episode. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at A Kind of Garbage and on Facebook at A Kind of Garbage Pod. You can also visit a kind of garbage.com or allmylinks.com forward slash a kind of garbage for all of our links. And you can find myself on Twitter at Presto Adam and on the Hey Kids Comics radio show with Martin, Dan, Chris, and Chris. Friday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Trent Radio 92.7 CFFF FM or at HeyKidsComics.ca. Dan? You can find me on Twitter at Dan the Writing Man. And uh, you can listen to my dusty old gathering cobwebs musical discovery podcast gather round the listing post on spotify with that said i'm adam bishop i'm dan collins thanks for joining us and be sure to tune in next episode hey dan do you know what really crinkles my comics No, Adam, what crinkles your comics? When you're researching a character and you go to marvel.com and you click on characters and the feature characters are all MCU characters and the actors who portray them. What happened to comic books? They're they're crinkled. They're all my, yeah, like you literally have to scroll (laughs) down to see the comic book characters because there's Wanda, like, I guess, uh, who's the actress who plays her? It's an Olsen. I don't remember. Is it Emily Olsen? Does that sound right? No, I have no idea. It's Mrs. Olsen or Miss Olsen. <laughs> and Ms. then Olsen. you have Wanda, Vision, Captain America, who is Sam Wilson. And then you have Winter Soldier, Black Widow, and Loki. And I'm like, no, this is Marvel.com. Where are the comics? You're pushing these movies and TV show characters on me. But you have to scroll down to be able to see to see them. That's funny because it's not like they're, you think they would have the comic book characters up higher so that you could try to get new readers into the comics based on the uh, MCU TV shows and movies rather than burying them and making you go look for them. Yeah. Where people like they were, if they know Marvel, they probably already know the movie characters, but yeah. there's, there's probably more money to be made from the movie characters than their other comic book characters, because that's a dying breed. But what money can, what money can be made on Marvel.com from people clicking on Sam Wilson, Captain America, rather than going some going down and finding Sam Wilson, Captain America, but the comic book Captain America, like, how are they making money off of this? Yeah. Now, to be fair, when you click on Captain America, Sam Wilson, there is two selections. It just shows the um, the movie version, but there's on screen then in comics. When you click on comics, then oh my, when you click on comics, it just points you to Sam Wilson, Falcon. <laughs> so Falcon. Yeah. You know what um, really probably crinkles somebody else's comics? Yeah. Um, when you buy the first appearance of Sam Wilson as Captain America from somebody for a dollar, and then three years later, it becomes he becomes Captain America in the MCU, and suddenly that comic's worth $100. The comics aren't pop. They're not worth money because of the comics. They're popular because of the movies and now the Disney TV shows. So the comics yeah, have no value. They're popular because of the demand for the character based on based on 
the t- the TV show, yeah. When was and it the will last... only go up when he has a movie. That's true. It's when that wait. Well, they had that TV show, but yeah. But yeah. they've already announced that they're like there's going to be a Captain America four, I think, with uh, Sam Wilson as Captain America. I'm waiting for when they well, they'll probably have like a Sam Wilson Captain America teams up with whoever the new Black Panther is as well. So I think that would do really good. I've heard a little bit of stuff about the like I've seen some stuff about how they're replacing the actor Chad Chadwick Boseman in the Black Panther 2 movie, but I haven't read the articles. I haven't actually seen Black Panther yet. I need to get, that's one of the ones that uh, is on my two view list still. Oh, I'm so fun, but I don't watch the MCU movies other than- You don't watch ones. any of them. Yeah, no, well, I've, just, I've seen some. You just watched New Mutants. Oh, what a great movie. I can't believe you didn't, well, you said it was okay, right? Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. It wasn't great, but it was okay. It wasn't a great MCU movie, but for a Fox movie, it was okay. It's true. I like how- um, um, bad uh what was his name sunspot was it sunspot in that that albert alberto yes yeah that yes yeah sun i was thinking wait is this sunfire or sunspot but it was sunspot sunspot cg looked really bad for his powers but demon bear looked amazing demon bear like saved that movie because that was that was a great fight and yeah um sunspot was a piece of shit character <laughs> sunspot it i mean the point the point was that they were all kind of not great characters you know they all had killed somebody by accident or on purpose but yeah sunspot was a bit of a, a bit of a dick 